every day you live there, you don't know if you're going to see the next day or not. Plus, a local man who lived in Palestine for years is calling for peace in Gaza alongside protesters in Dayton. This as the president announces he will address the nation tomorrow night. And that is where we begin tonight at 10. Over 40 people gathering in downtown Dayton at Courthouse Square to call for an end of the fighting in Gaza. The event was organized by the Freedom Road Socialist Organization and lasted well over an hour. Two News reporter Seth Bird was there and he joins us live in studio now with what he saw at the protest. Seth? Brooke and John, I spoke with some protesters tonight who want the U.S. to issue a ceasefire and to stop funding Israel during this war. Many signs and chants also called for an end to deaths of innocent people in Gaza. That chant echoed over and over again in downtown Dayton as protesters called for the end of innocent Palestinian lives lost in Gaza. The people that are dying, they're not Hamas. They're innocent families with kids who have done nothing. They just want to live in peace, just like you and me. Peter Kamsia, who is a dual citizen of Palestine and the U.S., says it's been hard not being able to hear from friends and family due to the area being cut off from the rest of the world. I don't know if they're still alive or if they just don't have internet and electric. That's why I haven't heard from them. It's really sad. You know, it, it, every day you live there, you don't know if you're going to see the next day or not. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Protesters making their message to President Biden clear tonight. The U.S. ending aid to Israel. They are funding this genocide um, and to an Israeli occupation of Palestine. Katie Thompson is one of the event organizers. She says seeing people of different beliefs come together like this gives her hope for the future. I think it is incredible that people from all walks of life can gather around this common cause. I think that is incredibly important. After an hour, protesters start to walk around the area and urge others to use their voices. If you can't stop the injustice and the killing that's happening in Palestine and in Gaza, tell someone about it. We don't have to support Israel. We don't have to give our money to fund buying weapons to kill innocent people. People of all backgrounds, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim, and others, were at tonight's protest in support of a ceasefire and defunding. And the Biden administration is expected to seek $60 billion in aid for both Israel and the Ukraine. You know, Seth, uh, U.S. funding and support for Israel is nothing new. Uh, a lot of that over the years. How much are we talking about over the last however many years? Well, according to the U.S. Uh, World and News Report, uh, there, at, at, since World War II, over $260 billion has been funded in foreign aid to Israel. All right. Thank you, Seth.